This summer, Touchtone Pictures is proud to present the sequel all America's been waiting for. Three Champs and a Baby. Yeah, hello. Is this Buster Douglas? Yeah, well, don't worry about who it is. Yeah, it's a unanimous caller. Yeah, look, I'm just a fan who's a little concerned about your career right now. Yeah, I saw the fight you had with Mike Tyson. You beat him pretty bad. You know, I think you should fight him again. Yeah, like tomorrow. <laughs> what? All right, so, so it's me. Yeah, so what? Well, how'd you know I disguised my voice? But come on, Buster, you gonna fight me or what? Oh, please. Come on, it's not going too good with the broods, man. Well, just loan me the belt for the weekend. <laughs> Wait, good, fine. I'm giving Robin's mother your number. Oh, quiet. I could still whoop the boat for you. Because I'm the greatest of all times. Float like a butterfly, stang like a tree. No, me, uh, no, that ain't it. Float like a... Uh, 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 Mohammed, I believe it's float like a butterfly. <laughs> Thing like a bee. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks, sugar. That's right. Float like a butterfinger. Stink like a bean. Yeah. Oh, round eight. Rope a dope. <laughs> Pretty funny, Ali. <laughs> I'll get the door. Round over. <laughs> oh, wow. It's a baby. Who ordered the baby? Did it come with pepperoni? <laughs> Wait a minute. Whose baby is this? Well, he's about your size, sugar. Yeah, but it talks like you. And it makes faces like Ali. Well, there's a note. Let's read it. Let me see what this note said. I don't know you. I can't read it. <laughs> uh, dear champ, remember your New Year's Eve party? Well, here's your baby. Well, as you can see, this is a champ. <laughs> that can be any one of us. We're all at their party, you know. Well, it's, it's signed Judy. Oh, oh Judy. Judy. Yeah. Well, maybe we should take turns with the baby, too. Yeah. <laughs> Get him a bottle. Get him a bottle. Something for the baby. Oh, all right, little baby. Now just swish it around your mouth and spit it out, all right? Don't you get cramped. Yeah, all right. All right, champ. Come on. Swish it around. Swish now. Spit. There you go. There you go. Ah! All right. Still crying. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe we should change his diaper or just something. Just Oh, wow. Looks like the little fella had a pretty bad accident. No, Michael, it's a girl. Oh! oh. oh good. I'll handle this. Come a little girl. It's the sugar. Look close now. In all your life, you never lay eyes on a more beautiful man. Did you say something about roaches? I don't want this baby living with roaches. Hi, it's me, Muhammad Ali. Z-Card Roach Spray, the most powerful spray in the world. That's that rash, it's not roaches, Ali. Oh, well, come sure. on, guys, do something. She's crying. What should we do? Uh, do that impression you do of Tommy Hines. OK, baby. This is an impression of Tommy Hearns in the last round of our first fight. <laughs> she liked it. She liked it. Looks like she likes it. All right, all right. Let's just sing it asleep, all right? Ready? Ready? Hit it, guy. Good night, you. Three champs and a baby. This time, the unanimous decision is comedy.
he was a by-the-book cop teamed up with an out-on-a-limb rebel. George, you got the I told you not to, right? They don't pay me enough for this job. Side by side, they took on Los Angeles. They worked together, and they played together. Until one day, the wrong guy got shot. That's okay, man. I'll take the bullet. Now, come on, run, get out of here. He's finally on his own. He's Detective John Sidekick. He doesn't break the rules, no matter how trivial. Take that murder one and jaywalking, pal. He's too straightforward to infiltrate the mob. Give me a night, son. So, who knows anything about that big cocaine shipment coming in here tonight? He wouldn't recognize a clue if it dropped in his lap. Sidekick. The snow's coming in tonight. In the old schoolyard. Snow? In Los Angeles? Yeah, right now. Take a hike! And stay away from the hooch! And he's definitely not interested in sex. I don't know anything about the cocaine. But I've got a room upstairs, if you're interested. Don't you know that I'm a black man in a crossover film? Sorry, sister, but you're barking up the wrong tree. Up yours. Finally, a cop with a healthy respect for the letter of the law, Sidekick. Coming this fall to a theater near you. Captain's log, start a uh, hell I can't remember. Our five-year mission is now turned into 25. We just left the Romulan galaxy and we're approaching senility. <laughs> we are also being followed by an unidentified vessel, which may be hostile. This entity, this thing, has been chasing us for two solar systems. Mr. Sulu! <laughs> Establish warp speed. And turn that blinker off. We've been turning left since right is fine. Aye, aye, Captain. Hey, look out for that asteroid! <laughs> Damn, Mr. Sulu. Are you blind? Well, legally, sir, I am. However, in this galaxy, I am allowed to drive to work and back. <laughs> Captain, my sensors tell me there's a deadly gas emanating from the engine room. Scotty! Hey, Captain! What's going on down there? Captain, I've lost complete control of my bowels. <laughs> you should be wearing your Starfleet Depends. Sprung a leak and I can't hold it much longer. Stay where you are, Scotty. Please. Spock. Spock. Stop wandering around and tell us who these people are. Actually, Captain, it's several ships. They're honking and yelling profanities. Well, tell them to go around. Well, by the way, Jim, I must remind you that as a Vulcan, I must mate once every seven years in order to survive. I've only got two days left, and, well, sir, you're starting to look good to me. Captain Spock, that's how I broke my hip in the first place. Captain, they're firing on us. Damn kids! Uhura, try to establish communication with the attackers. 
What did I tell you about wearing those old outfits? Whoa. So you want to be down with old P.P.? <laughs> Pardon me. Oh. Or believe me, at this point in your life, no man is bold enough to go there. You didn't say that 500 light years ago, sucker. Shh. Kevin, wait a second. I think they're trying to establish communication. Screen up. Everybody. Clap on. on. <laughs> There's nothing on the screen. Jim, their radar has jammed our frequency. They're about to fire upon us again. Mr. Zulu, get us out of here! God, he's flatlining again. I told him to take the nitro pill. Clear. Aye, aye, aye sir. Whoa. Spock, my Vulcan friend, where are you? Help! I've fallen and I can't get up! Spock needs medical attention. Bones to the bridge! Bones to the bridge! <laughs> Please, do something. Damn it, Jim. I'm a corpse, not a doctor. <laughs> Captain, sensors indicate that there are intruders on board. Oh, maybe it's meals on wheels. <laughs> I'm taking no chances this time. Establish defensive positions. Okay, people, you have had your fun. It's back to the sunny side retirement colony. Your children have been very worried about you. We're not going anywhere until we get our trip to Bountiful. Right, guys? Right. right. We're having Salisbury steak tonight. Oh, with mashed potatoes. And tapioca pudding. Ooh. You dirty bastards. <laughs> Spock, not you. Are you kidding, Jim? It's bingo night. Besides, live long and prosper. Ah, damn arthritis. <laughs> Captain's log. Stardate 2057. I guess six sequels was... Not too bad for a beat TV show that was canceled like years ago. <laughs> I could stay and fight, but no sense beating a dead dog. She's outside. I'll get her. <laughs> Lassie! Oh, Lassie! Lassie and I go out and play? I don't think that's a good idea, Timmy. This just isn't a safe neighborhood. Don't worry, Mom. Lassie will protect me. After all, there's no breed of dog that's smarter, more loyal, or more protective than a pit bull. Now, you and Lassie are to play indoors, and I won't hear another word about it, young man. <laughs> Mom, I think she's trying to tell us something. <laughs> well, what is it, girl? There's danger? <laughs> what danger? From land? Fatherland? You think there would be some danger in the reunification of Germany? <laughs> I understand your concerns, but the political climate today is much different than it was 50 years ago. Maybe we should stop lining Lassie's dog bed with U.S. News and World Report. I think you might be right, Timmy. <laughs> Somebody lost.
lost an arm. It's a good thing you found it, Lassie. Maybe the owner will give us a reward. I'll just put it over here with the other arms, Timmy. <laughs> Listen, Mom. I think Lassie's trying to tell us something else. Was that girl? Open the letter? Why? Oh, Timmy, it's an eviction notice. They're trying to throw us out of our home for harboring a dangerous animal. Now, what animal could they be referring to? That's it, Mom. That's what Lassie was trying to tell us. Not fatherland, landlord. See? We were in danger and Lassie was helping us. Come here, girl. Let me give you a big hug. We love you a lot. We love you, Lassie. All these guys are bums. You want to feel you out, see what you got. He's got just one thing on his mind. He's gonna to wanna to put you on your back right away. That's right. So what I want you to do is when you're both in close and you're hot and sweaty, I want you to throw it at the third rib. You push that in there, pushes all the bile out of the body right onto the floor. But Dad, it's just a day. Do I have to wear these gloves? Oh, darling, but it goes so nice with the mouthpiece we got you. At first, there was three champs and a baby. Now, Touch Tone Pictures presents Three Champs and a Little Lady. Now, remember, no contact below the belt. That's right. Let's get these up there. Oh, Dad. Now, do you remember what I told you? No, Dad. Well, neither do I. But just in case, he may be pretty. He may have zits. Whatever you do, don't let him touch. Uh, like a bee. Pretty ecstatic, darling. Thanks. Oh, I think I might need some money, Dad. Oh, that's right. All pretty girls need money. How much you need, darling? 10, 20, 30,000? Here, take it off. Here, take, take the watch. Take the deed to the house. Take it off. Just get your ball headed mother away from uh, Mike, me. Mike, 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 Mike. It's over now. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't let them flashback. I'm all right. It's OK, Dad. No, darling, that was pretty ludicrous. Hey, ludicrous. That's a pretty big way. <laughs> I remember the first time I fell in love. It was right after a big fight. I looked down and saw one of the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen, and it winked at me. Then I picked it up and put it back in the socket. <laughs> you know, I remember my first date. You do? You? No, I don't. <laughs> well, anyway, girl, just remember, if you have any problems, just call the house. I'll hop in the Mercedes, I'll drive uh, right. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Dad, doorbell. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny, Ollie, it's pretty funny. <laughs> dad, 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 this is my date, Jerry Cooney Jr. Here, how you doing, kid? Oh, gee, oh, like father, like son. I'm ecstatic or ludicrous. Why don't we just fight another round, Mike? All right, I'll tell you what, you guess who I am this time, all right? All right. All right, check it out now. We're in the second round, all right? You hit me with a right hand real soft. Boom, I'm down. Hey, where's my $22 million? What's the Douglas? <laughs> Three champs and a little lady coming to a theater near you. Just like the films Cry Freedom and A World Apart, this is a story about the anguish and upheaval of black South Africa. I can remember it as if it happened yesterday, the day they bulldozed down my maid servant's shack, destroyed all of her property, and separated her from her children. And all of this on a night that I had planned a formal dinner for 30. Oh, how I cried. 
How many girls would I have to interview before I'd find another Jacinta? And as they took Jacinta away, kicking and struggling, I felt as if the police were pulling me away, kicking and struggling. I had to do something. So I cried, and I took a picture from my little scrapbook of anguish. After the police had gone, I noticed that they had trampled over a bed of geraniums that I had been pruning since I was a child. I looked down at those flowers, and I saw the pain of black South Africa in all of those broken stems and wounded petals. I wept until I realized they were perennials and would be back again next summer. Yes, with Jacinta gone, life just wasn't the same in Johannesburg. Oh, didn't I mention that I wept? And as the condition of my household deteriorated without Jacinta, I began to understand what it must be like to live in a black South African relocation camp. Next, as I attempted to polish my own silver, my arms began to ache and I could feel what it must be like to toil long, arduous hours in the white South African diamond mines. It was at this point that I decided that Jacinta simply had to be liberated before my entire household rotted from within, the same way minority rule was rotting my continent. No one could stop me now. I would write a letter to President de Klerk. So I wrote and I cried. And I cried, and I wrote. And I wrote, and I cried. Who knows? One day, I may even mail it. My Dark Conscience. A true story about the pain of watching somebody else suffer and wanting to do something about it, but not really wanting to get involved, and then feeling a little guilty about it, sort of. My Dark Conscience, a film that could well be coming to a theater near you.